yeah a uh, very good afternoon to everyone present here warm greetings it gives me a great pleasure to extend a warm welcome on behalf of department of electronics and communication engineering conducting a webinar on student to professional which is s2p by resource person mr vijay anand sir we welcome you sir with great esteem and cheerful greeting sir i also welcome our honorable chairman sir our beloved vice chairman sir our respectful principal dr a b mayakanan sir and finally our scrupulous ece hod dr joseph jayakumar sir i gladly welcome you all to this webinar on transformation of a student to professional next i would like to give introduction about our chief guest mr vijay anand sir who is a assurance manager in mech dermot he did his under graduation be in specialized in mechanical engineering who is an alumni of government college of engineering tirunelveli He attained many professional certifications, which includes ASME Authorized Inspector from American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASNT NDT level, Certified Painting Inspector from PWI, which is in UK. He is very much expertise in management system audits, non-destructive testing, quality control, and he has more than 26 years experience in the field of quality assurance. He also done his membership in Indian Institute of Welding and also in Indian Society for Non-Destructive Testing. And now he is currently working as a assurance manager in Mick Dermot, a market leader in engineering, procurement, construction, and installation of oil and gas. offshore platforms and subsea pipelines now i would like to call our today's presenter mr vijay anand sir to share his knowledge to us over to you sir thank you very much uh, ms priyanka for uh, your nice introduction can we have the slide please on the screen one of the key attributes of a good student is asking questions quotes none other than the great dr apj abdul kalam this attribute could be further extended by saying a good attribute of an engineering student is to ask two questions one is why another one is how if you are asking these two questions certainly you are a good student hod of ec department dr joseph jaitmar hod of mechanical engineering department mr sita raman hod of civil engineering department mr sorry hod of civil engineering department mr sita raman and faculties of jnn institute of engineering and my dear students a warm good afternoon to all of you it's really my pleasure to speak in front of student always there are various reasons for that one is whenever i speak in front of students i feel like i'm still in my college life although i completed my engineering 26 years ago don't try to calculate my age i am still in the 20s like you the title of today's session is student to professional a transformation that should happen to all engineering students before you come into the industry the contents of this session is looking like this introduction there is an objective there is a key then what are the unknown unknowns what are the personality attributes that we are going to talk about and of course there should be a question session and finally wrap up as priyanka mentioned this is my introduction deliberately i keep this slide little denser one of the important things or objectives of this session is to inspire the students 
not to show my muscles here, right? But to inspire students. Therefore, I deliberately keep this particular slide essentially denser with contents. So what you are seeing from here is my, of course, apart from my basic qualifications, the additional certification that I have attained throughout my career. So the takeaway for you students out of this is upon completing your undergraduation, don't stop. That is the key takeaway out of the slides, out of this particular slide. So throughout the session, from each of the slides, you are having a bunch of takeaways. Please pay close attention. What uh, Priyanka didn't mention was my personal interest. That is always fitness, keeping myself fit, both mentally and physically, by practicing yoga and calorie, which is a martial art. For this session to succeed, success cannot be spelled without you. That means without you, the students, who are the key participants apart from the faculties, right? If I pull out the letter U, we cannot pronounce success, right? Therefore, in order to make this session a successful one, very first thing I would like you to do is get ready to enjoy because this is not a theoretical session. This session is going to be giving you some takeaways that would be certainly useful to you throughout your career. Therefore, get ready to enjoy. Avoid distractions by switching off your mobile phones or putting them in mute mode and closing the doors, getting distracted by family members whatsoever. Be present both physically as well as mentally. Engage and participate. Your participation is absolutely important so that you can take away a lot of things out of this. If you do so, certainly a good takeaway is assured. All right. First thing is be selfish. Right? I have a definition for selfish, which is different from the usual definition and the meaning. Selfish means do good for yourself. Take care of yourself. If something is good for you, do that. Even if it is away from the comfort zone, do that. That is selfishness. Therefore, throughout this session, I want you to be selfish, meaning be present, engage and participate so that you carry a lot out of this session that would be useful to you throughout your life. As Priyanka mentioned, I work for McDermott, a company which is a market leader in engineering, procurement, construction and installation of these kind of facilities that you are seeing on the screen now. Many of you might have seen it somewhere in the TV or in newspapers, if you are a good newspaper reader. These are called oil and gas producing offshore platforms. They look like a toy in the screen, but they are massive structures. Right? We call them platforms. There are two parts. One is a leg part right? that is holding the top side part. The leg part is called a jacket and the, what is sitting on the top is called as the top side. It's a superstructure. Together we call them platforms. Right? If you see, let me see if I can point. Yeah. So there is a bridge in between the platforms. There are five different platforms here. All right. The one on the left hand side Sorry, right hand side, what you are seeing 
This is an oil producing platform. This field is al Shakin field where I have spent at least 17 years in my life throughout my career. Out of my 26 years of my career, I have spent 17 years with this particular oil producing field. This is the largest oil producing field in Qatar. Its name is al Shakin field. This is one particular complex. So this is an oil producing platform and this one also a smaller oil producing platform. They are interconnected by a bridge. And the one in the in the center, which is having a boom like this, yeah, that is also connected through a bridge. That is called a flare platform. So whenever there is a base gas to be uh, uh, expelled, it is sent to this boom and it would be flamed. Right? There would be an igniter there. Whenever there is gas coming out of this, it will automatically ignite. So that is called the flare platform. On the left hand side, there are two platforms, both are accommodation platforms. So we usually go by helicopter. There is a helipad here, what you are seeing at the top. Here also there is a helipad and you will have all the facilities to live in there. There would be a good bedroom, your um, restroom, you know, uh, your dining room, everything would be there. It's, it's like a house, but it's offshore. All right, so oil comes out of the rock, petroleum means rock, oleum means oil, yeah, petroleum means rock oil, typically it is hiding inside rocks below the seabed, it depends upon the oil field, sometimes it is kilometers down below the seabed, sometimes it is, it is probably meters below the ground level, subsea ground level, seabed level. So oil comes out of it and it gets processed here. Typically when oil comes, it doesn't come as oil. Yeah, it, it's, its name is crude oil. What is crude? Crude means it's not clean. It is dirty, right? So it comes as a mixture of oil, sand, gas and water. And it gets cleaned to some extent. We call it as processing here. Some gases are extracted, to some extent water is extracted, to some extent um, so typically oil is completely uh, removed from the oil. Then it goes onshore through a subsea pipeline and it gets refined and it gets further processed into petrol, diesel, kerosene, whatsoever. Some of the fields produce natural gas and they get processed so that we get LPG and the other gases. All right, in this business, probably it's one of the very few businesses in the world where it involves multiple engineering disciplines. In this, we have civil and structures, engineers from civil and structural engineering, they also would be working. You will have mechanical and metallurgical engineers, you will have electrical engineers, you will have electronics and instrumentation engineers, petroleum engineers, geomatics engineers, you know, it is a multidisciplined industry and every discipline contributes significantly to run this facility safely, All right? At various stages, various disciplines are involved during the material manufacturing stage, metallurgical in uh, engineers are involved. During construction phase, mechanical engineers, building engineers are involved. And during component manufacturing stage, you will have electrical component manufacturing, you will have electronics and instrumentation items like transmitters, pressure transmitters, whatsoever. Petroleum engineers, they study the field, the oil and gas field itself, how good it is in terms of containing oil and gas. Can it be taken up for processing and for consuming? And likewise, geomatics, they also um, study the subsea part of, uh, part of the field. Why I showed this is just to show what is the business I am in. And the next one is to give some sort of hint that this EC students can also get into oil and gas business. Right? And this picture what does it show? This is an incident that happened on an oil and gas facility somewhere in the world. 
if the engineers do not do their job properly this could happen that is the message out of this uh, particular slide a small ignition is sufficient to catch fire and when it catches fire there is a potential for releasing of toxic gases explosive chemicals and it could catch fire like this it wouldn't give us even a single second to escape therefore we have to be very meticulous right from the engineering phase design engineering phase manufacturing phase of various components during the construction phase and of course during installation and operation phase if we are careless during any of these phases it could end up in this kind of scenario okay fine it is offshore kilometers away from the beach what's the problem is there a problem to human being of course yes the platform would not be running on its own in the world very few platforms or satellite platforms which are controlled remotely whereas majority of the platforms are manned platforms operators would be constantly working on the platforms monitoring various parameters therefore unless we protect all these people by preventing these kind of incidents then we are going to lose a lot of things first of all priceless human lives then we will lose the environment before we go into money money is the last part you can earn money right probably these platforms are insured they will get the money back but the lives we lost the environment environment that is spoil the sea water we spoil may not be reversible therefore engineers should contribute meticulously throughout their employment whatever industry you go engineers are recruited for some reason which nobody else can do only engineers can do therefore we as engineers we have our conscious responsibility to ensure that we perform our job meticulously all right how often we see this kind of incidents question we don't want to see these incidents right that's why industries critical industries critical businesses like this they recruit engineers they don't recruit people just like that they want qualified people meaning what the qualified people will do their job appropriately so there is a key takeaway out of this slide all right so always keep in your mind that you are an engineer and you are recruited to do a meticulous job objective of this session student to professional transformation right that is to guide budding engineers like you so that you will have the right approach when you approach the industry when you approach your career probably some of you might enter into professional what you call teaching profession some of you might become entrepreneurs but still you should have the right approach towards whatever you are going to do know the expectations what is expected of you right it could be knowledge it could be behavior and there are many more attributes that we are going to see in the succeeding slides so that you will be able to mold yourself into a smart professional gone are the days where industry was looking for sincerity hard working and various usual attributes now the world the industry whichever profession you take they are looking for smart professionals right so what i understand is majority of you are from first and second year of your uh, of your 
college it would be very easy if you apply some of the attitude that we are going to learn out of this session and mold yourself throughout the next 2 3 years when you are in the college itself so that when you come out of the college when you are entering into your profession it would be easier for you to behave smartly that is the key objective so that you will give a very good impression about yourself first impression is the best impression as you all know typically what happens is when we grow up up to our 12th standard it is very easy to switch from one stage to another when we leave our nursery school we go into high school we behave like a high school boy likewise when we go into uh, the next level higher secondary class we behave like a high secondary class student then when we enter into our college life that also is easy transformation we behave like a college student we don't behave like school student that transformation also is bit easier what is not easy is to come out of or get out of the college student mood that transformation is not easy for many of us if we apply the formula that we are going to see in this session it will be easier for you to make the transformation that is the key objective of this session all right there are many engineers budding engineers here okay can you post your question here or sorry answer here what is engineering and who is an engineer let us see how many answers we are going to get the form of the, the the format of this session is interactive session therefore you please participate so that we will have a successful session even if it is a silly answer no worries please participate what is engineering and who is an engineer we can see the chat box here right even if they are texting from youtube can they see um, can we see the chatting here dr jaykma can, can we see the chat box here even if they are texting from uh, youtube can anybody uh, answer my question please priyanka hi priyanka sir i am uh, just typing the answer sir ah okay all right uh, can uh, anybody post their answers here even if they are watching through youtube I'm not saying any answers so far. All right. Priyanka is answering. Engineering is a process of innovations and engineer is a person who does that. That's a good answer. Priyanka, others from watching from YouTube, can they post their comments like this? 
Uh, sir, yeah, yeah. They can post it, sir. They so can, sir. I can. I'll be able to see as I'm seeing your post here, right? Okay. No worries. Let's move on. Thank you for your answer, Priyanka. That's really good. This is how you should participate. If you look at Wikipedia, the term engineering is derived from a Latin word, ingenium, meaning cleverness. Okay, and engineer, meaning contrive or device. Priyanka, your answer is more or less matching with what is defined here. So typically, engineers are clever people, right? Because engineering innovation, they don't happen as an accident. They are a result of intelligent efforts. All right. So always keep that in your mind. Don't be an engineering graduate. Be an engineer. Right. That's our aim to become engineers once we complete our four year graduation, four year graduation program. All right. So what is the key to transform from student to professional? If you look at the font size of professional, it is bigger than the font size of student. It is for some reason, right? Meaning you have to grow from a student to professional. What is the key here? The important key is change. What to change? Change yourself. Change from a student mood to professional mood. As I said earlier, when we are changing from a nursery school mood to high school mood, it changes automatically. Right? Likewise to the next stage of your our school life. Whereas when we want to transform, transform from college student into professional, it's not happening on its own. You have to take some effort. It's natural. No need to blame any individual. It's quite human because that particular age is going to be the most enjoyable age of our life. Right? 18 to 22 years. You cannot get that life back. Change your mode from student mode to professional mode. Mode and mode. Both of them should be changed. If you are able to do that, you can be a successful professional. But can it be done simply or in a day or two or in a couple of months? It cannot happen all of a sudden. It has to gradually change. First year and second year student, I'm really glad. Typically, I, I have presented this uh, uh, session to at least six or seven times to various engineering colleges uh, of final year students actually. It was designed for final year students, right? but probably I made a mistake. I, my thought was little different. It, this should happen right from the first year itself. So I'm really glad JNN Institute of Engineering, they have given a wonderful thought that students should be transformed right from the first year itself. I really appreciate the college, the, the professors, Dr. Jayakumar, Dr. Sita Ram, Mr. Uh, Shannu Rajan. How they, it, it really, you know, um, clicked my mind immediately why I thought this should be only for final year students. Thank you, professors. You, you really taught me something significant here. This kind of transformation should happen right from first year. So that when you are leaving the fourth final year, eighth semester, trying to enter into industry, you will have a very good mindset because you have transformed over the four year journey. So this is the key here. Change yourself. All right. So when we enter into industry or any career, our own entrepreneurship or you know, teaching line or being an employee. 
unknown unknowns there are many unknown unknowns what does that mean i coined two sentences all based upon my own experience when i came out of the college i was trying to know what i am supposed to know what are the things that are there without my knowledge or that i am i am still not conversant with right we don't know what we don't know we should admit that first of all because learning especially our engineering field is a big ocean and what we are learning in the college is the foundation they give the right foundation so that you will be able to explore when you enter into the industry or your professional career we don't know what we don't know we should know what we should know all right we should know what we should know what are the things i am supposed to know that should be known to me known to us right if you keep these two sentences in your mind always you will not stop learning you will keep learning continuously can i put the slide please on the screen hey priyanka sir actually sita raman sir as the control of uh, presenting sir ah, okay Uh, professor sitaraman can we have the slides on the screen is it uh, visible first of all the slide is visible yeah professor sitaram Priyanka, are you able to communicate with them? Ah, oh, yes, sir. I will. Is the slide visible on the screen, Priyanka? Ah, okay all right it's back thank you very much so what we don't know what we should know it depends upon the career path that we chose all right this question paper is different for different students right we cannot copy others here so being in the electronics and communication industry if someone is entering it industry then what you are supposed to learn is different from someone who is entering the oil and gas business so we need to be cautious with that but there are certain things like the attributes that we are talking about here they are quite common right so therefore this session is common to any engineering discipline that's how i tailored this anyone petroleum engineering or geomatics geologists whatsoever all right we often come across the word personality right what is personality is it simply dressing and personal appearance if i do some makeup and uh, appear good i do have a good personality is that correct probably not it is a wide umbrella if you look at the <laughs> size and shape of the umbrella it is wide right and it has got various attributes various attributes multiple attributes it depends upon the level of your profession right the attribute that you are supposed to possess it is just to highlight that there are multiple attributes under this broad umbrella which is personality
passion and dedication so unless you have passion towards whatever you do you are not going to shine we don't want to be one among millions right we want to be one among hundreds we want to be in the top 100 if there are million people if there are 100 people we want to be in the top 10 likewise right so wherever we are going we want to be in the top toppers list we can say for that unless you have a passion and dedication it will be very difficult for you to shine in your career learn and develop knowledge knowledge is power especially our profession if you don't have knowledge and if you don't keep yourself abreast of the latest advancements you cannot progress further one universal goal for all individuals in our life is to make progression we want to move we want to grow up so for that we should keep ourselves abreast of advancements for that we should keep learning and we should keep developing our knowledge for that we should be honest first of all okay am i developing my knowledge right ask the question to yourself first of all we should be honest to ourselves if you are not honest to ourselves then certainly our progression is not going to happen that is for sure we should be honest to ourselves then we should be honest to others in our profession be honest be open please i, I urge all of you students to develop this character of being honest if you have done a mistake admit it there's no issues but if you don't develop this attribute now it is very difficult to change yourself when you are growing especially when you reach 30 35 40 and all you will become rigid and rigid the mind wouldn't allow you to change therefore develop a character of being flexible being honest you know being transparent you know to have the integrity to demonstrate integrity then everything will come to you automatically have the courage to admit mistakes if you have done a mistake admit right yes i have done this mistake and this is the preventive action that i am going to put in so that it doesn't happen again that is what we should develop don't try to hide things okay it might be it might look easier now you might feel comfortable doing so but in a longer run it would hinder our progress therefore please develop these characters now itself you are 18 to 20 years of age this is the right age to you know mold yourself into a right shape be a good team player most of the time we engineers we work as you know uh, a team player we have to contribute unless we contribute to the betterment of the team then we are not going to be there anymore a team of good players wouldn't win the game but a good team of good team players would certainly win the game always be a good team player try to help others you know so that the entire team wins rather than doing your own alone and you know let uh, let the others suffer that's not a good attitude develop this skill of listening right especially at this age it's sometimes difficult you know slowly coming out of the teenage phase of our life 18 to 22 i found it very difficult i was a sportsman i was a hockey player i found it very difficult listening to especially listening to the faculties in the classroom so i was always dreaming of playing in the playground right but when you are in the engineering college you are 
prime role is to learn right your prime role is to attend the classes and to you know secure good marks by good learning right then rest of the things you keep it as extra curricular therefore listening skill is really important when you are entering into a profession you will be sitting in a meeting right and you would be asked some critical questions unless you listen to others carefully i seen many guys you know when someone is speaking they would not be paying attention at all that is not correct that's not a professional behavior first of all then when a question is pointed towards them that person him or her over the person then they wouldn't be able to answer <coughs> the right <coughs> in, a, in the right manner right because the you might be a good engineer with some good input that you have brought in but in a meeting room the game is completely changed so unless you have paid attention to others speech you won't be able to give an appropriate answer in a professional manner so what would happen although you might have been a hard worker brought some very good inputs to the meeting room but if you have not paid attention certainly people are going to think that you have not done your job properly that would be the conclusion right therefore please develop this skill it's very easy if you listen to your faculties in the classroom and of course during your you know conversation that you are going you are having with your friends over it is in whatever situation always try to listen carefully communication skills communication skill is not only about language in modern world modern days everyone is able to speak english not an issue at all but is that only the communication skill we'll see that in the next slides express maturity right so i see a lot of people you know in my industry my subordinates they don't express maturity a guy with 10 years of experience wouldn't behave matured he would feel shy he would not speak properly he would hide things he wouldn't be transparent he wouldn't be professional in in doing his job so there's no maturity at all if you don't express maturity that means you have not grown up that means you cannot express expect a good salary for example right unless you grow up okay not only growing up in terms of number of years if i simply say i am in the industry for 26 years is that you know is that alone enough to support my expertise that's not correct if i say that i have 26 years of experience i should express maturity proportionate to the number of years i have spent in the industry in anything and everything express maturity if there is a problem you are solving a problem express maturity there communication typically communication is closely associated with english language proficiency but that is only a part of it <clears throat> yes proficiency is an important thing whenever you are communicating in any language you should be proficient in that language therefore try to learn as many languages as possible i personally had a goal of learning at least eight languages in my life that was my goal so i was in the construction industry in india where typically you, you work in various parts of the country so i had worked in mumbai i have worked in jamnagar i had worked in panipat so where we used to you know encounter people from all over the country so I had an opportunity to learn Gujarati, Telugu, of course, Malayalam, and um, uh, Hindi, of course. You know? So five languages I managed to learn when I was in India. Not so proficient, but okay to communicate. Yeah, but I had the passion. And after coming to Qatar, I learned Arabic also to some extent. So I had the passion of learning languages. It would be very difficult to learn languages it's not easy but if you have the passion then it's easier it becomes easier 
expression you have to express the things in the right manner right when there is a concern when there is a problem within the team or within the task that you are assigned in come and express to your managers don't keep within yourself and when it reaches the critical part if you go and tell that there is a problem which happened which started months ago then your line manager is not going to appreciate you if there is a problem go and express right if there is a challenge in accomplishing a task go and express body language is another means of communication it's really really important i urge all you students right from your first year focus on your body language it's really really important. there are various books available about about all these things in the market nowadays and you are all gifted generation that anything you want you can buy it in seconds right gone are the days 26 25 26 years ago when i came out if i am looking for a technical literature we yeah, i have to go to a different place to make photocopy it would be very expensive even if i have a literature of 50 pages to be photocopied every copy would, would cost 2 rupees per page 100 rupees 200 rupees was a big, big thing in those days right so body language is really important you should know how to behave you should know how a body language could make others annoying some of the body languages are really really rude we should know all these things you might say that no no i am not rude sir but my body language is like that's not going to be acceptable people might tolerate and ignore but certainly it would affect your growth in your career these are all hidden kpis people keep right yeah he is a hard working guy but but the way in which he talks he behaves it's very rude i cannot put him in front of the client therefore i am not going to promote him as a team lead let him be an individual contributor that would be the decision you would take whereas someone with less number of years of experience with a good body language good way of expression presenting in a pleasing manner they would have a you know quicker growth than others then you will keep screaming ah oh, i am 10 years of experience the guy is only 7 years of experience organization is promoting him not me all these things because you miss certain attributes right always be solution focused you are engineers right as we saw in the earlier slide engineers are clever people clever people don't exaggerate problems they focus on solutions right so always be solution focused sequential communication we should know how to communicate in the sequential manner right so we all in our nursery school probably in the early high school there will be a big paragraph given with jumbled sentences and we have to rearrange those sentences right so sequential communication is really important it has to be prioritized sometimes the thing that has happened in the fourth stage has to be spelled out first because that's a critical communication critical piece of information that the manager or your line manager should know so always seek consent timely communication another important piece under communication it has to be communicated at the right time right up or the anomaly had happened month ago but if you go and tell your line manager or co it is now it's not going to be acceptable at all right then there will be a judgment on you that you are trying to hide things transparency has mentioned earlier it should be transparent communication should be transparent it should be trustworthy if the first six or seven attributes are properly applied then your communication is going to be trustworthy right even a small miscommunication could completely spoil your career career in the sense in a particular organization you wanted to have uh, employment for another 10 years for example it's a good organization you are working in you are really enjoying it but 
one wrong communication could spoil your dream of being engaged with that organization for next to 10 years. So all these things have been tailored based upon my own experience and the things I noticed around. I've come across a lot of people who do not fulfill these kind of things. Someone is rude in body language, someone is always creating problem, someone is not focusing on solution, he is always exaggerating the problem, I cannot do that, we cannot do this, and I'm always negative minded. You should avoid all these things because we want to be one among hundred, top hundred, not one among millions. Again, express maturity when you are communicating. Whatever is the problem, go and express in a matured manner. Right? So these kind of things, as I said earlier, they cannot happen overnight. It needs practice. It needs a mindset change. And this is the right stage for you students in the, in the second semester or fourth semester, whatever uh, you know, uh, semester you are in. This is really the right stage. To focus on all these things. Set goals at each employment and move accordingly. Always set your goal first. Upon entering, don't set your goal like, okay, my salary should be doubled or tripled in two years' time. That wouldn't happen. Right? Because that's out of your hands. What is in your hands is you develop yourself and set a goal for your own development in terms of personality, in terms of additional qualifications. You know, invest on yourself. Then the salary would be coming automatically. That part would happen, you know, without any effort. Just keep focusing on yourself. That will take care of you. Without a goal, don't travel. Without knowing the destination, can we take a bus? Where do you want to go? We should know first. Accordingly, we catch a bus. Right? We don't catch a bus without knowing where we are going. All right? So what I'm saying is, during the first year of your employment itself, right, you might struggle a bit to understand the organization structure, the way of behavior of your colleagues, the seniors, all this stuff. But have your own goal set. Accordingly, you move yourself. Again, don't think that these are all required only for, you know, only after four years, five years, completing our engineering, completing our masters and all these things. You cannot change all of a sudden. Right? Therefore, practice now itself. So this is the umbrella we've seen that earlier, various attributes. So that attributes you are going to carry to your office, right? Always carry this umbrella. We carry umbrella when it is raining, right? But always think that it is always raining because these attributes are always needed. So carry this umbrella with you, right? So whenever, from now on, whenever you are meeting your professor or going for any project related stuff, going to meet someone strange to you, stranger to you, always carry this umbrella with you. Practice it now itself. I'm not saying you keep aside all your students' mindset and you know start behaving like a professor. I'm not saying that. You should enjoy your studenthood. That, that's absolutely important. Next two, three years, you have to enjoy yourself. Right? I don't want you to miss it. But same time, be selfish. Keep developing all these skills. If you are having a conversation with your friend for for one hour, half an hour enjoy, 45 minutes enjoy, just 10, 15 minutes you pay some attention to all these things. Punctuality. It has a big weightage in organizations, especially if you are you know, engaging with, with, with people from other nationals. Punctuality is given a very good weightage, be it going to a meeting or for a particular task, whatsoever. Be punctual. 
you are all highly qualified people right engineering qualification is not a simple qualification guys and girls please remember that it is something significant you are different from others you always should keep that in your mind right don't undervalue the qualification you are highly qualified people when you are come when you are out of the college that's what the world is looking at you you are an engineer right you cannot simply say that yeah i got stuck in traffic due to this reason that reason i am unable to be punctual you cannot give such an answer right because you are engineer therefore punctuality is a key attribute appropriate dressing wherever you are going ensure that you are dressed properly out of 50 people probably 40 are not taking care of it that doesn't mean that we also should not take care of it right because we are selfish people we want to take care of ourselves we want to take care of our growth we want to take care of our image therefore we take care of ourselves dress appropriately ensure that your watch station is kept tidy i seen lot of engineers the watch station is always with you know dumped with piece of papers it's not tidy at all and when i go and ask them okay are you doing a quality job yes sir i am doing this that and all but your your watch station doesn't say so sir i have lot of workload so i don't have time all these things that's not acceptable at all these are all minimum expected things even if there are 50 papers it can be arranged you know in a in a right manner in a traceable manner in a systematic manner that would give assurance to your line managers that you are working systematically you are working smartly in spite of the workload you still work systematically these are all hidden kpis key performance indicators right you cannot simply say dump all the papers on on your desk and still claim that i am doing a great job update update changes in advance go and update your line manager or whoever it is if there is any change in the schedule in the procedure in whatever whatever decisions taken earlier if there is a change go and update to the right people it could be your own team right you hear something from your manager but if you don't update the change to your team the team is not going to perform it might fail then if the team is failing that means you are also failing record key activities if something significantly done some key decisions are taken keep a record of that you know in this modern world we are slowly losing our memory power or we are not losing right we are not using our memory power properly especially with all these gadgets even your close friends phone number without looking at the mobile phone if you were not able to spell it out right the situation is driving the technological advancements they are driving to be moving away from our human capabilities so many of my subordinates when i ask question about something that happened last week they will you know blink a bit oh, did you tell me sir of course i had mentioned you <laughs> right so keep a record of key notes then some of the subordinates they keep a record of it then they look back they look at their diary and said yes sir this is what we discussed during this particular meeting held on so and so date timely reporting it's similar to timely communication right report the things to your colleagues to your line managers to client wherever you are right? even if you are an entrepreneur you have to communicate with your customers in a timely manner express qualification what does this mean as i repeatedly say engineering is a significant qualification right 
if you rank the education qualification in our country, certainly engineering qualification is in the top five. So therefore, if you are given a task to accomplish, you should demonstrate in such a manner that it is done by an engineer. Right? So that should be kept in your mind always. If you are going to present a report about a particular inspection or particular calculation done, express it in the right manner. Right? So your qualification should always be visible in whatever you are doing. There are some general tips for you. Keep this slogan in your mind always. Right? Learning is an endless process. I claim that I am in the industry for 26 years, but still I keep learning. If I don't read something new on a particular day, I don't sleep. Right? Always keep learning. Don't think that at the end of fourth year, I'm done with my eighth semester. Now I know everything about electronics engineering. I'm good to go. And this is me. If you want to take me or you don't take me, that's not correct. Keep learning things. It could be theoretical, it could be practical, it could be some subject, something, you know, which is not relevant to your career, but it certainly gives some general knowledge so that you can talk about it. Do not forget basics. We are all engineers. We are not clerks, right? We don't, we just go there, we populate some data and we come out. We are not into that profession. We are engineers. Whatever you studied in the first year, whatever you studied in second semester, third semester, everything, you should have a chain you know, in your memory. One day or other, it will certainly test you. Right? So when you are in a situation where you have to apply the basics, immediately you would go to that because you are an engineer. Yeah, I have studied this already. Yeah, I don't remember completely. But if I go and refresh myself, certainly I can pull that out. Then you will be able to do your task here easily then you present yourself to your line management and you, you will get the appreciation, right? Therefore, never ever forget basics. Whatever you are studying in the college, it is not to forget, right? Okay, you may not be remembering each and every word that you read from the textbooks, but the topics that you have studied, the takeaway under that topic, you should not forget, right? human brain has got plenty of memory power right therefore try to feed that as much as possible make reading as a habit as part of your life so during your studies of course you are reading a lot of theoretical you know your academics and all apart from that keep reading something about you know your own um, future career, something that would give you general knowledge. I typically categorize books into various categories. First one is, it's about our own subject. It gives knowledge on the subject that you are studying or in the college or in the profession, whatever it is. The second category is, it gives a knowledge which might not be, you know, applicable to my career, but certainly it gives a general knowledge with which, with which when I express something to my colleagues, whatever, I'm able to pronounce it in a better way, right? For example, when I used to work offshore at the oil and gas platforms, right? So earlier, I used to focus only on my task. Then slowly I realized I'm an engineer, I should know the basics of the entire platform operation. Then I started looking at what is transmitter, what is it doing, 
Likewise, what is an electric cable doing here? What is the power cable here? What is fiber optic cable? Some basic stuff. I started reading from internet, from the colleagues, I was gathering some knowledge here. Then the third category is just, you know, that gives you pleasure in reading it. For example, there is a book on Dr. Abdul Kalam. We all should read that, right? His 2020 vision, his uh, Agni Chiragal book and all. We all should have in our pocket always. And there are some things like health related stuff. We should read them also. And then we have the time pause books, books for time pause. So there are various categories. So pick them and always keep reading as part of your life. Be fit physically and mentally. With, I've seen guys with full of knowledge, but they are unfit. They won't be able to go to the site if I tell them. Okay, there is an inspection to be done at 20 meter height. Can you climb up and uh, do the inspection and come down because you have to take some critical decision based upon the outcome of your inspection. The guy would say, sir, sir I cannot climb, climb um, 20 meters. I have this ache, that ache and all. That is absolutely not acceptable. At the age of 30, 35, if you are saying I cannot climb up 25 meters, then uh, you are not fit for the job. You have to be fit for the job. Okay? I'm not saying that you all should go to the gymnasium every day to you know, make some six packs and all. That's not the point I'm making. Be fit. Right? Always understand the causes of failures. If something has failed, that means there could be only two reasons. One is we are not doing the right thing. And another one is we are not doing the thing right. Only two reasons that could cause failure. And if the failure was because of our wrongdoing, admit that. Have the courage to admit your mistake. Unless you correct that, then the failure is going to continue. There is no harm in encountering failure. But if the failure happens because of our poor attribute, because of our poor attitude, because of our ignorance, that is not tolerable. You knew that it would fail if you do this. Still, you are doing it. That's not Always, before making a significant move, a critical move, assess the consequence. There is only one game in which we focus on the consequence first before we take our step. The question is to the students, which game is that? We first focus on the consequence. Before we define our move, which game is that? Student, I, I knew that there are hundreds of students watching in the YouTube. Please post your answer here. Other students are uh, chess, Bishmeta. That's the right answer. Yeah. So before we decide our move, First thing we do is, okay, if I make this move, what would be the consequence, right? In all other games, we keep moving, right? It could be football or hockey, whatever. We keep moving, right? Whereas in, in chess, we don't move unless we assess the consequence. Learning is an endless process. Don't forget basics. Reading is part of life. Be fit. If you are not fit, you are not going to read books. Correct? If the body is not fit, then you are not going to read. Right? The causes of failure, know the consequence. If you do all these things, certainly you will gain knowledge. Knowledge is power, especially for engineers. If there is no knowledge, then we cannot call ourselves engineers. Keep this in your mind always. Knowledge is power. Now, I spoke for nearly 
70 minutes. It's exactly 70 minutes in another four seconds. It is the time for interaction. I would call this session a successful one if I get at least five to 10 questions. Now, I have opened the floor. The responsibility is on the students to make this session successful. Please post your questions. There's a lot of effort actually behind this uh, session. You know, organizing, I heard various uh, phone calls with your faculties, with Dr. Jaikumar, uh, Dr. Sita Raman, Dr. Shango Nathan and all, right? And uh, today is Friday. It's a weekend holiday for me, right? Friday and Saturday is our weekend holidays. But I have taken the time to meet you students and to share my views experience and all to the possible extent that means what there's a lot of effort behind this so to make this session successful the next 15 20 minutes is with you open the floor please post your questions on the chat box no worries or you can speak up that also no issue and i will answer let us make it interactive I'm still doubtful, Priyanka, if uh, people can post questions from YouTube. But you, you confirm that, yeah? Yes, sir. They can post the questions, sir. Okay. Please, students, don't think that you are only in the first year, there are senior students. Why should I ask questions? Don't feel that. I want to break that barrier. Right? And I am not your faculty. Right? You can ask me any question. Only question you cannot ask me is about my academic performance in my UG. <laughs> Other than that, you are free to ask me any question. Don't feel that your faculties are here. They would be really happy to, to see you asking questions. We have another valuable 20 minutes. So please use this as an opportunity. No? Are there any final year students? Or Vishmita? How can we choose which is the right path after engineering? Going for higher studies or getting into some job? Same question or similar question was asked when I conducted this session to Setu Institute of Technology in Madurai. So there was a girl student. She was a research student, actually. So after completing her master's, she was in the industry for a while. Then she came to research and you know, part time she was um, working also as a, as a lecturer. Same question she asked. Then I pointed the question back to her. To her, sir. You have to ask this question yourself. As I said earlier in one of the slides, it's the passion that should drive you rather than market. If you are passionate in teaching, go for that. You will shine. That's for sure. Likewise, if you are passionate in design engineering, go for that. Right? So it should be from yourself. The important thing that we miss is what is there inside us. We don't assess it. Right? So it is my strong advice to all you students. Assess yourself. Because you don't know. You don't know about yourself. You don't know what are your own strengths. What are your passions. You don't know that. For sure you know. Your brain knows. But we fail to assess that. Right from the beginning, I was always interested in mechanical engineering. When I was coming out in 95, right, 
the IT industry was slowly booming. And I had the passion towards mechanical engineering. And I never wanted to you know, go into uh, IT field. So likewise, everyone should assess themselves. Accordingly, you take your moves. Probably you will struggle. You will encounter some, some hassles, some failures in the early stages. But if there is a real passion, you are going to succeed. That's for sure. Good question, Vishnu. Uh, Smart question it is. So ask yourself, assess yourself. Sometimes the situation drives us. Right? Sometimes the family situation, although you, you prefer to go for higher studies, sometimes the family situation is forcing you to go for a job. That's no problem. But still you assess yourself. Right? If you can sustain by going for masters, you know, in spite of whatever is the family situation, go for it. Without encountering, without sailing a hard ship, if you try to succeed, that might be, that might not be a sustainable success. Whereas if you sail the hardship, then you succeed. That would be a sustainable success. That's, that's my own experience also. We all struggled a bit in the early stage of our career. And uh, I was so determined to, uh, to develop my expertise in my own core discipline. And uh, this is where I am now. Again, I repeat, first year student, second year student, come on, ask your questions. Yeah, I know that you are a bit hesitant, right? Because you have just entered the college, just in second year. There are some senior students, there are faculties. It's all, you know, trying to avoid you asking questions. But uh, don't worry, break the barrier, come on. Or any other senior, senior students, Third year, final year students, post your questions. Okay, if there is still hesitation, probably what I can do is I will share one of my experiences. So that will certainly help you in not doing this, right? Dr. Abdul Kalam quotes, you read books of failures, right? If you read books of success, that's giving you only knowledge. Knowledge in the sense, okay, fine. This person has done this and he has got success. That's not going to help you. Whereas if you read books on failures, those failures you will take so that you will apply some preventive measures, it doesn't happen again in your life. Therefore, he strongly suggests you read book on failures. So I'll share one of my failures or where I think. Back in 2004, I became a manager for the first time. And in two months time, we had a senior officer's visit to our office. He was, he was a vice president for the whole of the region, covering some 10 or 12 countries. And it was a weekend, it was Thursday, it was in Qatar actually. And he invited all the managers for a dinner in a big hotel, Sheraton Hotel. My usual routine on Thursdays, not only on Thursdays, my usual routine on in the evening is coming from the office, doing my exercise for an hour. Only then I would do anything. I still maintain that. Of course, family is not happy with that. That's a different story. But I try to maintain that in order to keep ourselves fit. Right? So that particular evening, I came home. I did my, I was doing my exercise. It was 7.30, we were supposed to be there in the hotel. And the finance manager, he also wanted to join me. He didn't have a car. He wanted me to pick him up on the way. And uh, I also agreed. 
So I completed my one year of exercise, had my shower, dressed up well. Then I went uh, went to pick the finance manager. The spot, the pickup spot that we fixed was a traffic light. Typically, that traffic light, it is on the red color for some times. So the plan was, that was a very poor plan, right? But I'm admitting, yeah. The plan was, okay, you come in that particular direction, you stand there in the paving, I will catch you when the traffic light is still red. And it was all well planned. We decided, okay, this is the road we are going to take. Unfortunately, on that particular evening, when I approached the traffic light, it was green. So I had no other choice because it was a weekend, it would be heavy traffic and everyone was banging the horn. So before my colleague entered the car, I had to go past him. Right? So if I get past him, I have to go all the way, make a U-turn in the next traffic light and make another U-turn in the traffic light that I missed him before I pick him up. And as I repeatedly said, that was a weekend, heavy traffic. We lost almost half an hour before he boarded the car. Then, when we were approaching towards the hotel, that was some seven or eight kilometers in the Cornish, you see, my petrol tank was showing empty, right? It was not empty, it was you know, alerting me with the light. So when it reaches the reserve limit, it lifts. Now the question is, you have to travel another six kilometer. Should we fill the fuel and go? Or we should take a chance and we travel, we drive. So the finance manager, his point was, Vijay, let's not take chance. If we get stuck in the middle of the road, then we will have no chance of, uh, you know, reaching the hotel. Whereas, if you filter fuel, certainly we are going to reach the hotel. Be on time or late. So there was a fuel station uh, just beside. But unfortunately, again, I would I would retract this word. Unfortunately, a little later, there was a big queue, long queue, in front of us. And that consumed another 20 to 25 minutes. Right. And by that time we reached the restaurant, it was 15 minutes late. Right. And only managers were invited for that dinner. So when we went there, my boss, the country manager, he was giving a good stare at both of us. And the guest who was uh, the regional vice president, he was also expressed his disappointment by giving a stare. Then after the dinner, I apologized to both of them that uh, we got stuck in traffic and uh, you know, the fuel tank was this, that and all. I, I, you know, I was telling the truth, but for the position I was holding, were they appropriate? That's the question. Absolutely not. Being a manager for a multinational company, I cannot quote such silly reasons why I didn't cut my exercise and start early. Why we picked the traffic light as a pickup spot. Is that a wise decision to do for managers? No, absolutely not. Why I didn't notice that the fuel was not was in the reserve level? Three questions when I asked. I was totally wrong in all of this, especially holding a position as a manager in a multinational company. You cannot quote such kind of reasons, silly reasons, you know. So you have to behave according to the level of your professional line. If you are a manager, behave like a manager. Don't say that I completed my exercise one hour, that's my routine and all. That day I decided, okay, from now on, critical visits like this, I will 
redefine my protein. Something has to be taken out, I'll do that. I do only the ones that are of priority. If that one hour I had saved, certainly I would have you know, picked my colleague in the, the right time or even if, if there was a delay in filling the fuel, I was late only by 15 minutes, right? If that one hour was there with me, certainly I would have gone there at least 15 minutes in advance. So that day onwards, I took a decision that I don't calculate time from the starting point. I calculate time from the destination. If I am supposed to be there by 7.30, I target reaching there by 7.15. Okay, 7.15, I should reach there. That means the travel distance is this much, half an hour of travel. Therefore, 7, 6.45, I should hit the road. Six five, I should hit that main road. That means another 15 minutes ahead, I should leave from the home. That means I should cut my exercise on that particular day. So this is how I changed myself. Instead, if I am being rigid, saying that, that my body is fast, my fitness is fast, therefore I don't compromise that. Yeah, 10 minutes, 15 minutes late, what's wrong in that? You know, then it is not the right attitude that we are possessing. Right? As I said, gone are the days. Where people were people with you know hard working sincerity were appreciated. Now we want smart professionals. If I am interviewing people, I would look for a smart guy. If someone is possessing 85%, someone is possessing 60% with some smartness, I go for him. Right? So whether you score 60%, 70%, 80%, whatever it is, be smart so that you would be preferred compared to others, right? So this is another takeaway you can always have. Be punctual. It's again related to punctuality, right? It's again related to our mindset. So what I'm saying here is when I became manager for the first time, was I able to change myself all of a sudden? No, right? It takes some time to transform yourself. Right? Okay, it took an incident like this to change myself, but I could have avoided that. My senior vice president would have appreciated me for being functional. Anyway, I, I managed to reverse that by, you know, doing some more changes to my behavior. But the first impression was not that great. I think that that was a good uh, good takeaway for you guys. So be it your semester exam, be it your own project, you know, when you are doing project in the eighth semester, you fix up a time. The project team should all come on time on a particular day, particular spot, be punctual. Sometimes amongst friends, we compromise that, right? Even when we go for get together after so many years, okay, we are all friends they will keep waiting yeah that's what sometimes the mind mind uh, drives us but we should avoid that okay, everyone should be respected okay we are all friends that means what we all should go on time to meet each other so likewise you, you practice that practice this in the first year itself you know second year itself any questions may request the faculties to ask questions if the students are hesitating so that you can share it you know when you meet with the students students dr jay kumar dr sitaraman mr shanmohanathan whoever it is I wish all the students a uh, scintillating career, right? not only uh, your professional career, but the student life also enjoy yourself to come up with some good uh, 
flying colors, good score in your academic performance. You know, keep yourself fit, engage in sports activities, and you know, develop your skills, communication skills, your writing skills. Then certainly you will be a smart professional. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure this is being recorded and uh, you can watch this video any number of time you know, so that it, it goes in your, into your mind. Because this is not for eyes and ears, this is for your psych, right? So that it will enter your brain and you behave accordingly. Thank you, sir. Now thank only you. I can enter. Now only just now I entered, sir. Okay. Thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge, sir. Uh, definitely is useful for us. Hope uh, we are very busy in uh, some other works. Uh, we are not able to cope up with you. Very sorry. No, uh, next time, next time we will plan uh, in a good way and uh, make it successful, more successful, sir. Today successful sure. from your part is uh, okay, but uh, from us we are not able to assist you. Uh, no problem at all. No problem. Yeah. If it was uh, finally a student, so certainly they would have engaged and they would have asked more questions. But they are still budding engineers. No worries, no problem at all. I'm sure they are listening this and uh, they are taking it, um, you know, to uh, transform themselves for the next uh, couple of years to become smart professionals, not just engineering graduates. I wish them all good luck with all the faculties like you. Certainly, they are going to be great engineers in the future. And I thank uh, uh, the faculties, Dr. Jaikumar. Mr. Sita Raman, Mr. Shangmoon Avadan for giving me this wonderful opportunity and uh, I'm always available if you need in future also we can uh, deliver such uh, sessions. Thank you sir. Sir, thank you sir so for spending your valuable time with us. Uh, I would like to call Bishmita to present the oath of thanks. Thank you, Priyanka. Bishmita. And the students, uh, if you want any guidance or any any information, uh, you are most welcome to communicate with me. My contact details are there with your uh, with your professors. You are most welcome. I have no issues. Bishmita, are you here? <laughs> I sir. Yes. Uh, now I now I would like to present the oath of thanks. It's a matter of pride for me that I got a chance to thank everyone present here. First of all, I should thank our honorable chairman, beloved vice chairman, our dynamic principal, and our respectful HOD sir for conducting this webinar to learn interdisciplinary thoughts and ideas. Additionally, I should thank our noblest presenter and today's chief guest, Mr. Vijay Anand, sir, for sharing his thoughts and ideas about future events and brushing up our knowledge. And finally, I should thank everybody virtually present here for joining this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.